little, sometimes multiple colors on the brush, and that's very traditional in Chinese brush painting, not to just do one color, is to load a variety of colors on the brush. So this brush is gonna hold a lot of water, so I'm gonna take a lot out, because I know this paper is gonna bleed like crazy. And I'm gonna go over to yellow, I already got some pre-mixed yellow over here. And I'm gonna put in some yellow, and I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna grab um, on the sides of the brush, Okay. I'm sorry, I'll just stay over here and all you follow me. All right, on the I'll sides of the brush, you. I'm going to put um, some blue, and I'm just grabbing some Antwerp blue here, and I'm going to mix that in. Of course, that's going to make it green. We'll just see what happens. Um, and, whoops, not in the paint's gray, which looks like ink. I'm going to go to the ink over here. Blend the brush a little bit, harmonize all that. I'm going to take out some of the moisture. You see how colorful that is? And I'm going to go back to some ink. And we'll see what happens here. And so, one of the um, techniques is how to load the brush. Another technique is, um, um, is the holding of the brush. I'm going to hold it vertical. There's a certain way to hold it. I'm not going to get into all that. So I'm going to hold the brush vertical. I'm going to move fairly fast as I try to make. So I'm going to make the um, the trunk, and then um, later on, basically the bamboo is the trunk, the branches, and then the leaves. So I'm going to start with the trunk, working down. All right. So. Get yourself a 79 cent brush at Lowe's, and you can do that. And let's try this 40 cent brush out. See how that does. Okay, so here's the other Chinese painting brush here. Let's get some yellow. And I'll still see here, but. Yeah, tell me about it. Antwerp blue, blend that a little bit, and then the corners touching, I can't see it, touching the ink, I don't want to dump the whole thing in there, there's the ink, there's the ink, all right, and you've probably heard, I think, I don't know, maybe Chunky Cheese said he talks, and a lot of artists will talk about Mama Bear, Papa Bear, all that kind of stuff, so you got, um, so here's the Papa Bear, and then here's the, I guess, mama bear. And I could put these on to help stop the, the weights are nice, but you could, don't have to go buy weights. You could use a stapler or whatever. All right. So there's your uh, Papa Bear, Mama Bear, and then for the rest of it, I'm just going to use, again, I have some Chinese brush painting brushes I could use, but again, you can use the things you already have. I got a, a 12 round here, which will work just fine. And a nice thing about um, the watercolor brushes are they, they spring back so quickly, right? Um, you have a nice snap back to them where the Chinese brush would go here. Um, sometimes you don't get that, but if you get the wolf here, they'll snap back better, but not better than a watercolor brush will. Um, but first, so we've got to put the rings on the, um, there's these little rings that go around the, in between the um, sections of trunk. I'm not sure what they're called. They're called little rings. <laughs> okay, now you can kind of, I don't know, maybe you can see how I kind of hold the brush. Index finger and thumb and then the middle finger kind of helps guide it and the, whatever that finger's called goes in the back. And then I'm just going to try and see what I'm doing here. Some rings in between. You need more light. I think I'm all right. You know, Chinese brush painters, they can use the force. They don't need me to see what they're doing. <laughs> So they have those little rings in between. 
And now we're going to start putting in the uh, branches. And then we just have the leaves. Medium, a medium ink, not too dark. And uh, we'll see what happens here. Put in some. So we got Mama and Papa. Um, and now I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about a lot of things. I'm thinking about positive and negative space. I'm thinking about um, another, you know, they got the Mama and Papa thing they talk about, or Ningye talks about. Also, uh, all the fish looking for the same food. So I want all the branches to be coming into the one point. I don't, you know, and I want, uh, so I'll, I'll point that out after I paint in some branches here. All right, I can't talk now. I gotta focus. Takes a lot of concentration. talks about a host group and a guest group. So this will be my host group of leaves over here, and then I'll make a guest group over here. Not really sure where I'm going, just like that. Alright. Alright, so now we have uh, some branches over here. Let's put some branches on the main trunk over here. And I'm trying to again get all the fish coming in looking for the same food and um, thinking of host and guest group in the composition. here I taped it should be you know I'm trying to do a similar composition to that maybe you can take a closer look at it later all right let's get some leaves on the other side so I'm alternating the branches um, so now I'm gonna come over on this side So these are fast bone stroke, it's called. You kind of lay the pressure down, pull it, lay the pressure down, and you get this kind of a bone look to the, to the trunk and to the branches. David, does it dry really fast? Uh, well, uh, compared to a watercolor paper, it does because it's so thin. Yeah. But um, you can see it, well, maybe you can't see it, but it is bleeding. And, you know, I probably, if I was at home and I wanted to make it really nice, I would have waited a little bit because I went through this thinner trunk and it is some bleeding. But, you know, I look at master's work and you'll see that. They don't waste time. They're, they're in the zone and they want to keep that flow going. So it's, it's considered uh, appropriate or, or nice and doesn't, um, it's not a bad thing to have that happen. Let's see. I'm trying to think of the flow here. Something like that. That looks nice. I like I like this. Well, no, I, I did a lot of plain air painting over the summer, and I went up into Ontario and I painted with some um, artists up there. And uh, well, before actually, before I went up there, I was doing some plain air painting, and I was over at the Landscape Arboretum, Minnesota Landscape Arboretum, and I is it better? Uh, um, painting that so much that I went home and I and then I think I did. 
Well, then actually, then I went up to Ontario, and I just started uh, playing with that same theme. And you kind of see how things kind of progressed. I went into that, and that, and so, um, and I was playing with the palette knife and and just throwing. Case of this one, you can see I was just went nuts. I was throwing colors on there and having a good time. And uh, and then I took the palette knife and I scraped in some texture. And so I tried that again to see what I could get. But then I, I really like the roots, that um, kind of negative painting, getting the roots, roots to pop out. So then um, this was the next one I did. So, and then I, I, well actually this one, I was actually looking at a, a tree in Ontario um, by a lake and it had these roots that were going horizontal. It was just crazy. I was hanging off this kind of this little cliff. And I, I just wanted to see how, what would it look like if I, and I spattered some, you know, I sprayed and then I spattered some um, color on just to get some foliage up on top. Um, and then I uh, did this one. And with this one, I, um, same, all pretty much the same process. This one, I just had some really fun effects with throwing on some salt and letting things kind of flow and letting the salt kind of create the texture. And then I um, wanted to get kind of a faded, misty look in the back, so I put a faded out uh, wolf back there. And I got more intricate and crazy with the roots, you know, put, putting in layers of roots, and then I put in some rocks. And then the last one I did was, was this one. And I just got a little more intense with the colors. Um, but instead of fading out um, the wolf, I had a little tree faded out there. This is kind of where I thought I'd try and go today. Does that sound all right? This is a quarter. And so let's uh, show you the process that I... So by 9 and 12. Uh, 11, 11 by 15. 11 by 15, yeah. And uh, maybe I'll, so I can talk about what I'm doing, what I'm thinking. In the, in the center here, I have this nice white area. I don't know, it looks like a light coming out from the back there. But there's no hard edges going into it to, to keep it nice and light and have you know, not have a lot of hard edges. I'm going to wet that center part. If I wanted some mist, some fog coming through or something, I could wet different other areas too. I'm not going to put a lot of thought into this. Just going to have some fun and see what happens, kind of respond to what happens on the paper. Um, and maybe to kind of reduce some of the blooms all and dry the edge. I can't, it's a little dark over here, so I can't see if I got all the edge real wet, but not too concerned about it. Now it's, well, we want to use big brushes, right? We're brave watercolor artists. This is a lot of fun. So I'm just going to start with the light, lightest color. I'm going to start with some yellow here. And I got my yellow all pre-mixed. And it's just a, this is my, my colors. I know I'm always interested in what everyone's using. Uh, it's a, I think it's a, you know, American Journey Joe's yellow, or, or probably a mixture of that and lemon yellow or Windsor yellow. And the red is a, probably American Journey Joe's red, cobalt blue. And I have, the dark is uh, Payne's gray. If you have any questions, then just shout them out. All right, these are all these are all pre-mixed. Okay. And they're, you know, this is a Chenki Chi thing I saw him doing with his. He had all these different colors all pre-mixed. I was like, gosh, yeah, you don't, you can stay in the flow. You don't have the Chinese brush painting. You don't want to stop. You want to keep it moving and uh, get in the zone, right? And so he's he's got it all there. He doesn't have to um, get distracted by stuff. Um, so it's, it's working great. I just put the lids on, so I, he, he has to use them all up. I just put lids on these things and put them in the refrigerator. Yeah. And uh, they're great for a snack, too. And... <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I got some yellow. So you don't mix on a palette? You don't mix colors on a palette? Uh, I like, you know, uh, I try and, you know, depends on what I'm doing, you know, the painting that I'm doing. I, I, if I want to have a lot of fun, then I want to uh, let the colors mix right on the paper and keep the colors nice and bright and, and vibrant. 
And you, you do a lot of mixing on, like Frank Francis says, you, you do a lot of mixing on the palette, and you go onto the paper, and it doesn't even look like it was on the palette. You lost it. And he says, just mix it on the paper and see what happens, and the colors are so much more richer and vibrant. And, um, now, I don't do that with everything. Um, a lot of those paintings over there, a lot of glazing and, uh, um, you know, making sure I got the, uh, we some stuff here. So I'm just going to throw in some yellow around here. I'm kind of making, I'm going to kind of think about the, just making a big bullseye, you know, and uh, let's get some red. I know with Chinese brush painting, paints, they are uh, made of plant material and stuff, and they'll get moldy and stuff. You gotta put them in the, I just, when I started doing this, I also used the Chinese brush painting, putting stuff in the refrigerator. I just did the same thing. I didn't want to take a chance, things start smelling. <laughs> you know, just sitting out there so long. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if that's necessary. I don't know. So you're going to see, I'm just going to go nuts on this thing in a minute. Plexiglass I have back here. That'll help mix it up a little bit. So I'm just creating some interesting textures now. And to speed things up, get the hair dryer out. I'm just going to blow dry and spray at the same time. Oh, that's pretty. I'm liking that. Oh, well, it helped drying it. Get it off this plexiglass. <laughs> I'm just going to spray it one more time. If I was at home, I might do it, keep on going, and just see how much texture I can milk out of this thing. But just to keep things moving, I'm just going to do one more. 